Welcome back guys and today I want to talk about a new project that my buddy is doing that I think you might be interested in. It's very fascinating to me. I'm really into this stuff. So what my buddy is doing right now is he has a bus that he is in the process of converting. So he's converting it into kind of a camper setup pretty much a sustainable living setup and all the amenities that you would have in a home but in his bus. It's uh, not a huge bus, it's not too big, not too small. I think it's a 60 passenger, so it's a good size. And we got some footage. I went out and hung out with him for the day and saw what he was doing and it's really impressive. Uh, so if this is something that you're into, definitely please let me know because I'm thinking about bringing a little mini series and putting it in with the, the regular stuff that we put together for you. So if you don't mind, if you are interested and you wanna check this out, chime down below and let me know in the comments section and we will put together a series on this. I think we may start a, a separate channel, have his own channel where he's doing this. And I know there's a lot of people that are interested in this. And maybe if you just wanna watch it for fun or give you some good tips if you're interested in doing it yourself. So let's go ahead and check it out and you guys let me know what you think. Hey folks, Ron here doing uh, bus modifications, uh, setting it up to uh, be a camper or maybe even a living habitat. So we're gonna make a little tour here and uh, go through it and show some of the modifications we've done and uh, things that are still in the process of being done and uh, give you all some ideas. Let's take a little tour and, uh, and we'll walk around and see uh, some of the things that have already been done to the bus. First of all, some of, the, some of the things we had to do was I uh, took, the, uh, took some of the flasher lights out that were uh, up in here and we're trying, trying to make it not look like a school bus. We just assumed it looked like, a, uh, like just a, a camper. And then, uh, and then we painted the, uh, painted the roof with uh, uh, flex seal because that's pretty good for uh, stopping leaks. And uh, any of these buses are gonna have leaks. So, um, and any kind of holes that's in the side of it, uh, we do a little patchwork on the uh, little holes that uh, otherwise would just uh, let the water in. Uh, when uh, we do the electrical, I had to uh, run a box from the inside where the breakers and the uh, switch boxes are to an uh, outlet right here so we can plug in to, at a campsite. And, uh, or, uh, plug in with a, with a generator, either one. Still in the uh, process of, uh, we're still in the process of building an extension on the, on the back here to, to house the uh, generator. But uh, so far it's just, uh, it's just for uh, running the air conditioner today. Now the air conditioner, uh, this, this was a good install. Uh, this is about a 24,000 BTU air conditioner, uh, and this bus had a uh, had a window down on the lower part of the door that uh, wasn't going to be used anymore. So we removed it and uh, and uh, uh, cut the hole and uh, and uh, hammered it out wherever it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't leak any water between the uh, door and the air conditioner, and then uh, caulked it up. That way, uh, that way it makes a good permanent uh, installation. And any rusty holes that, uh, that were in the body, we tried to patch them up so uh, it wouldn't look so horrible. And uh, let the water and the, uh, the elements in. Made sure that when we were doing the electrical work, we uh, had an outlet on the outside, so if, uh, if the uh, occupants are sitting outside, they can uh, plug their phone charger or anything, maybe a radio or something, to out to the outside. Don't have to run a drop cord out. There's a lot of work to be done on the uh, electrical wiring. Had to put in uh, industrial type wiring so we didn't have to uh, try to conceal it like you would in a household wiring. The uh, electrical boxes, the reason we have three switch boxes is because one of them's gonna be for the inverter, 
one for the generator and one for the on onshore for the regular house current or, or campsite current. That way you can shut the other two off no matter which one you're using. And then run all of these to the breaker box. You've got the two center for the 220 and the two outer for the 110 that goes on both sides. This is going to be for the air conditioner right here. We got right now hooked up to the generator. But this is going to be a permanent outlet right here for the air conditioner. So I use the 20 amp circuit breakers because uh, that way uh, when the, when if something kicked out on your on your air conditioner, it'd kick out these two in the center or either one of these 110 circuits would be, you know, the, the curbside and the roadside. So that way we got everything covered. It's always protected, every circuit that you put in. That way there's no short, no uh, uh, possibility of having a short or a fire. Now the flooring, first we had to uh, patch all the rusty holes and, uh, and we had to uh, primer it and get all the rust out. And then after that, uh, we put a, um, a Luon underlayment down. And that's Luon under this under this uh, foam right here. That's a Luon, and that covered that made it even all the way across where all the holes and uh, and patches are. Then uh, after we put this uh, foam down, this is that snap together type flooring. Is the uh, it's the kind that uh, that that when you put a, like a border around the outside, it it holds it all together. They call it a floating floor. And I've, I've never done this before, but uh, this is all new to me, and uh, which I haven't really had any problems with it. Have to make sure all that the flooring is going in the same direction and it snaps together nice and tight. That way there's no gaps and no, uh, no possibility of it separating. To any anybody that uh, is building a, a, a bus, it doesn't have to be a fortress, but you do need to keep your valuables safe. So I suggest everyone get some kind of safe. This one right here seemed accept acceptable right here, not impenetrable, but nonetheless, it's something that that your uh, uh, drug addict or something wouldn't bother with. Uh, it's not going to stop a hardcore safe cracker, and. Uh, so we always make sure you got something somewhere to put your valuables in. And now I got this TV uh, TV mount right here to uh, to kind of cover it mostly and disguise it, so uh, people won't notice the safe. If you don't notice it, then they're not going to be bothering with it. Another thing, I always want to make sure that that when you do electrical work, you put in one of these outlets that has the uh, has a charging ports. That way, uh, even if you left your charger at home, you can still charge your uh, phone or your laptop. Okay guys, so there is my buddy's footage of his bus that he's converting. Let me know what you think, and hopefully this is something cool we can put into the series. It's kind of prepper-minded. And also keep in mind, this bus is pretty much bulletproof. It's an old school design and it's pretty much EMP proof. So if uh, the grid goes down, if your car is not running, this bus is still gonna be running. And so it's a great setup for prepper-minded folks that are into the same stuff I'm into. Hope you are too. And let us know what you think. Hopefully this will be something cool we could roll into the series. As always, guys, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching. And definitely like, subscribe, and share. And make sure you hit that notification bell. You might be subscribed, but you might not be getting notifications for the newest videos that we put out as soon as we drop them. If you hit the notification bell, it'll let you know right away. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. And we'll keep on pumping out some really cool videos for you. Thank you so much for watching.